to Mtacha News Inside. My name is Karen Mikoma. We've got amazing stories planned out for you, but first, let's get to the headlines. Religious leaders join hands in the fight against FGM. Two girls are pleading for justice after being abandoned by their parents. Five girls invent an app to help fight corruption. Religious leaders have condemned leaders who are using religion to promote FGM. Speaking during a joint event organized by anti-FGM hero champion Sadia Hussein. The leaders termed FGM as a practice that has no space in society, urging other religious leaders to speak against the practice. Colin Sorano has more. Following President Uhuru Kenyatta's bid to end FGM by 2022, religious leaders from the Muslim and Christian communities condemned those promoting the practice using spiritual books. Speaking during a joint press conference at KICD Nairobi, the leaders reminded those promoting the practice of God's judgment for their heinous actions. You have a duty, you have a calling from God to stop this practice. And I tell the religious leaders who have chosen to keep quiet, by God, you will be asked on the day of judgment. Where were you when this six-year-old girl was being pinned down and parts of her body given to her by God were being mutilated. Why were you that you could not even speak? So I tell them, you must speak. You have no choice because this is evil. As members or as leaders in the religious fraternity, we are coming to say together that we need to walk now together and walk the talk. FGM should be brought to an end and we need to come together and join forces and say no. They also recognized the challenges facing the fight against FGM, terming religion as a strong force. It is easier to tackle a problem that is being supported by culture by telling people this is a practice that has been overtaken by events. But when it is supported by religion, it pre uh, presents a bigger problem. Because for one, religion is very emotive. There are people who are ready to die because of what they believe in. And to many people, the moment you bring in religion, it is unquestionable. God has said this, the prophet has said this, who are we to challenge that? So to many people it is unquestionable. Again, religion is a powerful tool because it promises reward beyond this world. I will be rewarded in the hereafter. And the FGM campaigner Sadia Hussein took the opportunity to share her personal experience published in her new book, Hidden Scars of Female Genital Mutilation. The Hidden Scars of Female Genital Mutilation. Why that title? I want the religious scholars to understand. The way I am dressed today, I'm smiling. Everyone would never realize that I have a problem unless I confess and say, I'm having problem A, B, C, D. You will never understand what I'm really facing. And not every woman who is a survivor of FGM has the courage to stand in front of the media or even rather in front of the community to really explain what we really went through. And FGM is a lifetime complication. As the fight against female genital mutilation continues, today's meeting at the KICD Nairobi is an affirmation that the fight against female genital mutilation is on course. Colin Sorono, Mtoto News, Nairobi. Not to FGM. Again? Not to FGM. Two girls from Saba Saba in Muranga County are pleading for a place to stay after being abandoned by their parents. Through a video shared on Facebook, the girls said they woke up one day to find their parents gone. According to the broken girls, their dad called their aunt to pick them up. After staying with them for a while, she chased them out and asked them not to go back. They are now pleading with the government to help them find a place to call home. <laughs> Mungkin tu tinggal nazi na, 
Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha says that the government should consider reopening schools earlier than 2021. Speaking in Mugori County, Professor Magoha said that the ministry was keen on paper preparations for observation of COVID-19 protocols in schools before he orders the reopening. As the coronavirus pandemic continues, a team of five girls aged between 11 and 15 from Nairobi have found a way to spend their free time. The team known as the Nairobi Tech Girls recently came up with an app called the Corruption Disruptor which won an international award. The app is meant to make it easy to report cases of corruption across the country. Take a look at our interview earlier. The Nairobi Tech Girls is basically um, a group of five girls, that's us, uh, <laughs> who have coded an app to um, hopefully eradicate corruption in Nairobi and then eventually Kenya. Um, so basically the app has three major features. Um, it has an education page to empower Kenyan citizens and give them the opportunity to um, learn more about um, the corruption and what's going, ar what's going on around them in their community. Um, also we have a reporting function so Kenyan citizens can find their voice and report the corruption going around them so they don't feel like they have no voice in the situation. And with these reports and all the data that we gather, we will then rank um, the government departments, like the police station, um, et cetera, on how corrupt they may be. And this will hopefully spread awareness on um, which departments are corrupt and which departments are um, clean. So we also have a geomap which highlights or pinpoints any areas of corruption around you. It basically gathers all the reports and shows you the locations of the reports and which location has the most corruption. So we kept going during quarantine because we wanted to prove that sometimes you just don't have to sit down and wait for things to be released by other people. You can do it yourself. You Sometimes people say that um, boys usually do the coding and boys usually do the technology, but we've, we found, we showed that girls can do it too and that we have power to do it. There was, I think, a few awards that you could win. And then the one that we won um, in Technovation Girls was uh, the Social Impact Award. And I mean, I just, I think that's amazing because that was like the whole point of our app was to make a social impact on our community and to spread awareness on this problem. I was also really surprised when we got the Social Impact Award and I was also really happy about it because like she said, um, that's what we wanted to accomplish. We wanted to make an impact on our community and of course it took perseverance and a lot of hard work but I, of course I couldn't have done it with all these amazing people and my mentors who are also amazing. Um, but even with um, all the challenges that we faced, I feel like um, once you have a group of amazing people to work with and um, amazing mentors too, you can do anything. Yeah, there were a lot of late nights. Um, virtual meetings were hard, 
but there was always someone who had a good day and was making jokes, encouraging everyone else. We did have to keep going and be resilient, but in the end, it really paid off. It made such a huge impact, and now we're like really, really proud of what we have done. We are the Nairobi Tech Girls, the creators of the Corruption Disruptor, the app you can afford to ignore, literally. And in our explainer today, we show you how to stay safe online. There are three steps. Don't friend anyone you meet online who seems really nice. Don't share your personal information like passwords in the chat box or anyone, anywhere else anyone can see it. If someone tries to force you to give your personal information, just leave the game or walk away. That's all we had for you this week. Thank you for watching. My name is Karen Mikama. Bye!